Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Liz. If you're returning, welcome, my name is Liz. <laughs> to wrap up 2020, I made a big long video. I think it was a little over an hour, it was like an hour 20 minutes, which is insane. Um, talking about every book that I read in the year of 2020. Instead of having another hour 20 minute video for 2021, I figured I'd break it up into months. So today I'm going to be talking about what I read in the month of January. So I read six books this month. I read four physical copies and two audiobooks. And the first book that I read this month was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book hurt my feelings so bad. I was literally crying like a little bitch baby. I have never been hurt more by a book in my entire life. It follows Achilles and Patroclus and kind of moves along with them as they grow up and uh, fall in love and remain in love and it kind of works through, I think it's the Trojan War, um, and it's really fucking sad at the end. I was really intimidated to read this book initially because I thought that it would be too smart for me because I, my brain is about this big. Um, but it was really approachable. Madeline Miller does such a good job of writing um, mythology and historically for like layman's. So like um, really easy for me to understand and comprehend and follow along with. And I love this book. This book is so beautifully written. I love my boys. Patroclus and Achilles. Oh, am I gonna cry? <laughs> I gave this five out of five stars. Would literally recommend it to everyone. Um, the only thing is that I'm sad that this sat on my shelf for as long as it sat on my shelf without me reading it. The second book that I read in January was an audiobook, and that was Universal Harvester by Josh Darnell. Uh, so Josh Darnell is the lead singer of The Mountain Goats, and he also has the book Wolf and White Van that I have not read yet, but my good friend Aaron recommended me this. Uh, we actually have a podcast that we do, and uh, if you want to give it a follow or a listen, I'll put the link in my bio. But she was talking about Universal Harvester uh, on the podcast, so I immediately became interested and I read it and I really liked it. I ended up giving it, I think, three out of five stars. It's very, like, small town in the Midwest vibes. Um, there's, like, a VHS store. It's, like, very 90s retro kind of vibes, but it was also kind of spooky. At first I thought it was a horror book, but it ended up not being that, um, which is why I think it's a lot of flack on Goodreads and um, a lot of the reviews were kind of complaining that nothing happens, but I think that's what makes it a good book is that you're kind of left going, oh, I wasn't given a resolution for anything that happens. Um, but essentially the whole plot falls around these, mis these mysterious clips that are edited onto these VHS tapes and kind of talks about how they got there. Um, and a history of a couple of the characters that are all intertwined. I thought it was going to be pretty spooky. I thought it was going to be more along the lines of like, I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reid. Um, but I think it was much different than that. It wasn't something that I was anticipating, but I still thought that it was really, really good. Next up is Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. Um, so this is a collection of essays written by Rebecca Solnit talking about um, feminism and men explaining things to her and men talking over women and men pretending that they know more about more about things than women. Um, the harmfulness of masculinity, the harmfulness of men, I guess. I gave this four out of five stars. I thought this was really insightful. I think it's really important to talk about these kinds of things. Um, this is kind of verging on like feminism 101. Um, so it's a good jumping off point. I think that this is a valuable piece of text. I don't think that it gets into everything that I would have liked it to get into. Um, I think I had different expectations going into this book than I did, uh, actually reading it. But I think overall, uh, it's a really well written piece of work. Um, a lot of really good tidbits of information, a lot of really good tidbits of personal experience. And I think that everyone should read this. And I think Rebecca Solnit is a queen. After that, I have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I loved this book so much. So I've seen the show like three or four times on Netflix. Um, my girlfriend Anne and I decided to read this book together. 
and I literally love it. We had read, um, we have always lived in the castle a couple years ago and we really liked it. So we were really excited to get started on this one. Um, if you've seen the Netflix show, it's like sort of follows that, but not entirely. It follows a doctor and his team of three volunteers slash handpicked assistants um, to stay in Hill House and document any kind of like paranormal findings that they may come across. Um, but one character in particular, Eleanor, gets um, affected by the house more so than the others and she kind of has a psychotic break and the house is really, you know, kind of taking advantage of the fact that she has like a weaker mind and a weaker will. And I just think that it was so scary. Uh, it's one of those books where I'll like, would be laying in bed, like ready to fall asleep. And then I would think of a certain scene from this book and be like, who the fuck is coming for me? Um, I think Shirley Jackson does a really good job of writing these like really eerie, um, kind of ominous spooky scenes. I do think that this one is better than We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Uh, I did enjoy this one better. We Have Always Lived in the Castle was really scary, but I think that this one was scarier. Yeah, I think if you really did enjoy the Netflix series that you would enjoy the this book as well. The next book that I read is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This is a thriller. This was picked by Books and Lala for her live show coming up in February. And um, I really like this. I thought this was really spooky. I gave it three stars. I thought this was super spooky, super thrilling. Um, it follows her main character who is living in Brooklyn. She's growing up in an apartment that she was living in with her mother. Um, and her mother has gotten older and ha is no longer living in the apartment. So she's living there and she's slowly watching her neighborhood become gentrified. Um, there's like a bunch of white couples moving in. There's a hospital that bought a building on the corner of her street that they're going to do some like sciencey experiments and develop some kind of um, drug. So as the neighborhood becomes more and more gentrified, more of her black neighbors disappear, uh, people that she's known for her entire life are going missing, and she's kind of like, oh, this is sus. So then some sus shit goes down, she makes friends with a nice white man who lives across the street who is not like other white men. So he kind of helps her figure out what is going on, um, and they uncover this nefarious plot um, being put together by white people to completely gentrify the neighborhood. This was like a big get out vibes like I was getting really big get out vibes but like get out but make a gentrification and I think my one criticism uh, or my biggest criticism for this book is that the end I feel like the author had established this conflict and established this big grand um plot twist that uh she didn't necessarily know how to handle she made it so big that the characters couldn't handle it um and I think that the end was like very rushed and was her just trying to like get it all finished and you know get it done but I think overall it was a pretty good thriller I would recommend it and finally the last book that I read in January is My Sister the Serial Killer by Wayne Kin Braithwaite and I love this book I love this book so much so it follows these two sisters um Koridi and her sister Eula and Eula always seems to find herself in situations that uh, she can't handle and she is a serial killer and so she's always calling her sister up like hey you gotta help me clean this shit up because you're my older sister um this was a really great read I thought this was really fun I thought this was really uh, messy because Creedy is in a lot of situations that she can't get herself out of because of her sister um which is bad. The culture is so different from then from anything that I've ever read before in my life. Like I don't read a lot of books um, set in Africa, which is kind of bad that I don't, but I'm really glad that I did read that. Got to learn more about a culture that isn't my own. But yeah, I keep thinking about this book. I can't stop thinking about this book. I'm literally was so excited to read it and it's thin. It's a super fast read. It's super fun. I cannot recommend it enough. I gave this five out of five stars. Hi. Indeed, you are seeing me at the end of February. 
I have not edited, I did not edit the wrap up for January. Um, so here I am filming wrap up for February. Look at my cat, he's so annoying. But yeah, so today, hey, it's March 1st. Today I'm gonna to be talking about all the books that I read in February. I'll give you their ratings, I'll give you my opinions on them, and we're just gonna talk about every book that I read in February. First book that I read in February is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This book is so sad. Dude, I'm gonna kill you. If you literally don't think of me, I'm gonna throw you off and you sit down, please. 30 something year old writer. She's trying to make it as an author. She's working as a waitress at a restaurant in Boston. She's renting this like shitty ass room um, from her brother's friend. I can't remember, but she's pretty much entangled in this like love triangle um, going on. There are like two men that she's interested in. It's kind of her like struggling to get through this period of her life. It's really sad. She just lost her mother. So she's dealing with a lot of grief over that. And um, yeah, it kind of follows her journey through like the grieving process and like having to come to terms with losing um, someone exceptionally important to you and like a loved one. Um, while also kind of like figuring yourself out and like making something of yourself. I ended up giving this five stars. Um, she does have a happy ending at the end. So you know what? I fucking love to see it because this woman suffered through the entire book. So she deserves the happy ending that she gets. Yay. The next book that I finished is Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. I had been reading this book for months. I started it over the summer and uh, it took me forever to get through. But once I was into it, I really sped through it pretty fast. Um, this follows like a 12 year old girl who lives in the South. Um, she lives with a pretty abusive father and has um, kind of this like, not a maid, but like kind of this like housekeeper who like takes care of her and make sure that she's okay, make sure, make sure that she's okay. And, um, it's kind of the time where like African Americans were getting the right to vote and, um, there's a lot of like hate crimes going on. So like her housekeeper gets hate crimed and put into prison and then they have to run away and they run to this bee farm, um, run by three black women, all sisters. And it's kind of her like experience with those women and like kind of like a coming of age uh trying to figure out you know like who she is and like um about her mother and it was sweet it, there was a little bit of like this white girl being like I'm the victim meanwhile she's not the victim and she also was like there's reverse racism happening and it's like Racism against white people doesn't exist, babe. Um, but anyway, look at this edition. Isn't this edition absolutely gorgeous? I'm literally obsessed with these drop cap editions. They are so pretty. I think it's mirrored, so I'm not sure you can see it, but it's so cute. I literally love these. I'm like in the process of collecting all of them. I also gave this five stars um, because it's a... Uh, I really liked it. And it's a classic. Made me cry. Made me cry a bunch of times. So you know what? can make me cry give it five stars the next book that i read is called witch light by jesse zabarski um this book follows a witch and a sort of like merchant's daughter slash warrior um and they kind of set off on a journey to find the witch's family and it's kind of this like unlikely friendship to begin with but then they like get closer as they continue their journey uh, it's also sapphic, so like that's incredible. They do end up together in the end, and it's so beautifully illustrated. It's a graphic novel, by the way. Sorry, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mention it, but so pretty. How nice is that? Um, yeah. There's a lot of really good representation in here, um, especially with like people of color. Like it's not just full of like white women who are witches like there are a ton of people of color in here which is amazing to see i did get this one five stars i enjoyed this so much i literally thought that this was so beautiful the coloring is insane um my only critique is that the plot did move pretty quickly um but i think it can be forgiven especially with like the visual storytelling like i don't think the plot really needs to be elaborated on or be like that intense because you have all these visual elements um 
And yeah, I really, really highly recommend this graphic novel. The next book that I read is Shine Your Icy Crown by Amanda Lovelace. This is the second installment in her, um, what is it called? You Are Your Own Fairy Tale series. Um, the first one is Break Your Glass Slippers. I really like this. I gave it five stars. I love Amanda Lovelace as this kind of like short form poet. Like I feel like she does it best out of any short form poet, poet out there. Princess Saves Herself in this one is like one of my favorite poetry books I have ever read in my life. That I have that book tabbed up. I have it in paperback. I have it in hardcover. So really like I'm an Amanda Lovelace stan. This deals with a lot of heavy topics. Um, it deals with female empowerment. It deals with relationships between sisters and mothers and daughters and friends and romantic relationships. Um, there are a few trigger warnings, so be sure to check those out before you pick this up. Um, and yeah, I think perhaps I am growing out of Amanda Lovelace and I am growing up out, I'm growing out of this like short form kind of Instagram poetry, but again, this is fun. It's short. It's easy. I love Amanda Lovelace. I love reading everything that she has to put out into the world. And I think it is important. Memorial by Brian Washington. This was my book of the month for November 2020 and I was so fucking excited to get into it. I was like so hyped for it um, and I did really like it but I ended up giving it three stars for a couple of reasons. Um, this book is big sad. There's a lot of big sad emotions in here. Um, it follows this couple, this African-American guy and this Asian guy and they've been together for a couple years I think and they've sort of fallen out of love. Their relationship has become this like very awkward, very complicated thing um, but the Asian guy Mike gets a call from his mother that his father has cancer so he picks up everything and he goes to Japan to spend the last couple months he has with his father um, kind of helping him with his business and spending time with him and making sure he gets the health care that he needs Meanwhile, his mother comes to Austin or Houston, he comes to Texas um, under the guise that she will be spending time with her son, but as she arrives, he leaves. So now this woman is left with his boyfriend, Ben, and so those two kind of create this relationship, they form this relationship, um, and they spend a lot of time together. Ben is also struggling with a lot of relationship. Uh, issues within his own family. This book deals with a lot of heavy unsaid unspoken emotions and one of the things that really makes books hard for me to read is the conflict and um, complications in regards to the lack of communication and sort of like unsaid words. I just wish that every character would communicate to their loved ones period. Like, I know that doesn't make for a good book, but it just makes it easier for me to read. Overall, I think that the characters were beautifully developed. There's so, so much representation in this book. My other thing with this book is that it doesn't have quotation marks around dialogue, similar to Sally Rooney's Normal People and Conversation with Friends. Um, and I'm coming to learn that I don't like it. Put, just put, what is so hard about putting quotation marks around your dialogue? But... I guess that's a stylistic choice that I don't really dig, but give this three stars. I did enjoy it. I did like it. The final book that I read this month is called White All Around, written by Wilfred Lupano and illustrated by Stefan Furt. It is a graphic novel that follows a boarding school in pre-Civil War Connecticut. The boarding school only caters towards African-American women. Um, so the story follows the teacher, the students, and the townsfolk, um, sort of dealing with the setup and the execution of the school. There's a lot of backlash against the school because it is in a predominantly white community, regardless of the fact that it is set in Connecticut in the North where, like, African American people could be free, like, they don't have to be enslaved. Um, but that doesn't mean that they were accepted or treated equal as white people like they still suffer greatly um so it follows a story of like laws getting passed and um like the things that have to happen in order to have the school operate 
The narrative is told in a way that is super educational and approachable without like being too hardcore. Like it is pretty lighthearted, but at the same time it's not like very invalidating or um, too lighthearted that it like erases the struggles and the trauma that these women endured while they attended this boarding school. The diversity in this book is great. Um, you know, it's so interesting to read about this boarding school that pretty much like kicked out all of their white students after one semester and then was like, I'm only catering towards teaching black women. Like I had no idea that that was even a thing. Um, and not only like within race, like there's diversity in religion, which I thought was really interesting. There are a couple characters who are Catholic or Christian that are praying to a god. And then there's another character who practices witchcraft, which is super interesting and in that I don't think I've seen in the, any book that I've ever read. I also really like this book because there's a part where there's a couple students talking about how, you know, they're essentially the pioneers of like African American women being educated. And towards the end, it goes on to show them teaching younger generations and other black women. And it is really inspiring and it is like, was pretty heartwarming. And I did shed a couple tears, I'm not gonna lie. Um, because essentially, yeah, they are, they are pioneers of teaching other African American women. And I think that's really important. Overall, good reading month. Hoping March is the same. And, uh, you know what? I'll see you at the end of the March. End of March. Bye. Hello, it's March. Um, I'm here to tell you what I read this month. I read a total of four books, which was okay. Um, probably could have done better, but you know what? We're vibing. Uh, been a year since this pandemic started and I whatever at least I'm reading so you know what let's just jump right into it the first book that I read this month is titled written in the stars by Alexandria Belfour it is an LGBT romance novel follows two girls one who's type a like an actuary very nitpicky about how she spends her time and a type b who is sort of this like buzzfeed quiz writer um and also is developing an astrology based dating app um, so the two go on a date, it doesn't really go well, but then they end up fake dating. This one was pretty middle of the road for me. I gave it a three out of five stars. I did really enjoy this. Um, the things that I did really like is that it was really soft. The relationship is really sweet. Um, and it's nice to just have this like representation in a romance novel that like you wouldn't normally get, you know what I mean? Um, there were also so many tropes that I enjoyed, like the enemies to lovers, the fake dating, um, the type A dating the type B and like that kind of clash personality but then like the chemistry ends up being really good like I thought those were really well done. What I didn't like about this book there was a ton of third act drama like so much unnecessary third act drama that like really should have been cut out of the book um, like they simply the characters could have like simply communicated with each other and like it absolutely would have been fine and like the issues would have been resolved but like because they didn't uh, there was just so much drama that drove me crazy um there was way too much meddling um with a couple of the characters like the type a's brother who like set them up on the initial date was meddling way too much um the type b character's roommate was like so involved for no fucking reason and was like so rude to the other girl it's just like I get that you want to have like a nice cast of like background characters but sometimes they're so fucking annoying that it drives me absolutely insane. The final thing is that there is so much millennial cringe humor in this. There are so many Harry Potter references, so many like cringy dumb astrological references, big time buzzfeed humor and like not to say that like if you enjoy it your trash but like I think that it's really corny and I think that it's really cheap and I'm just like so tired of reading it in books like I experienced too much of it like on Facebook or like in my real life like seeing all these like horrible Harry Potter quizzes and like Harry Potter memes and just like BuzzFeed content like I'm tired of it I'm literally tired of it so reading this like it is bearable and if you do enjoy it then like this is a non-problem for you but for me it was just like way too much and like something that I don't want to read about. My dogs are screaming! Why are they screaming? The next book I read is titled Real Men Knit by Kaywana Jackson. This follows a family of four boys who just lost their mother who was the owner and operator of this family-owned 
um, person of color owned yarn and knit and crochet supply store that um, kind of, you know, created a sense of community within its own community. Like a lot of the um, older women of color would come and like sit and like do like knit and crochet circles. Um, and so it follows our main character who is not related to this family, but like grew up with the boys and like worked at the yarn shop and follows her and one of the sons, I think the youngest son, um, falling in love and like coming to terms with their mother's death and kind of like dealing with the drama in um, the familial relationship. I thought this was really cute. This wasn't like a very straightforward romance like I thought it was. It was more of like kind of like a lighthearted family fiction book instead of like a romance. Um, the one thing I did struggle with this book is the chemistry between the two main characters. Like it was there but I really feel like there were a lot of other characters in the book that had like better chemistry or like I wish they had focused more so like on the romance or on the familial relationship. Like I feel like if they had chose one of those like it would have been really strong. Um, but I think overall it's like pretty lighthearted, pretty sweet. Um, the familial relationship was really really sweet between the four brothers. I did really enjoy reading about that. Um, it's for brothers who were all adopted and raised together and it just kind of like their relationship with their mother and like how they had grown into these like full grown men was really sweet. I am so excited about this next book. The next book is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. I liked this book so much. I gave this five out of five stars because I was just so excited to have read it. Um, it gives me major Haunting of Hill House vibes. Every character is queer which is like insane like it is so refreshing to read a book where the main cast of characters is, are all queer like it is so refreshing so it kind of follows multiple timelines the first timeline kind of gives us a base understanding of the book it's like back in 1902 and there's a boarding school in Rhode Island and there's a club of girls called the plain bad heroines that like kind of follow and worship this piece of writing the school is notorious for like having a bunch of like queer female students um and so this club two of the members end up falling in love um essentially curse the school and so this book that all these girls are reading are pretty much cursed there are a couple of deaths that happen at the school um kind of dubious no one really understands um and then the second timeline follows the headmistress of the school and one of the professors and they're in love and kind of follows like their downfall, how they're affected by the school, how they're affected by the book. And the third timeline is present day. We follow our three main characters who are all queer, amazing, two of which are actresses who are cast to play the two girls who originally died at the beginning of the book. They're making a film adaptation of um, the goings-ons at the school. And the third main character is an author who did a lot of research. She's young. She wrote this book at like 16 years old or something. And so she did a ton of research, like lived at the house for a little while and wrote a book kind of detailing like everything that happened at the school and, um, you know, talking about the mysterious deaths of these students and of these teachers. I love this book. I thought the pacing was really good. It was a really long book. It was it was like something crazy like a 20 hour audiobook which was like probably the longest audiobook I've ever listened to. Um, but I pretty much enjoyed like every single second of it. I thought the mystery was really interesting. I thought that some of the scenes were so spooky. Like I thought that it was like really spooky vibes like really spookily done. My one complaint is that there's a character called Merritt who is the author, the one who did all the research and wrote the book. She is fucking horrible. She is literally horrible. She has a conversation with um, one of the actresses and one of the actresses is bi. And so Merritt pretty much is biphobic and is like, well, you're not a real queer girl if you still like boys. And this other girl is like, well, actually I'm bi. So please don't fucking invalidate my sexuality. Um, and she's also just like terrible like she's so boring and they like okay maybe I have two qualms so like I hate that character and there's also a scene where like the three of them hook up which is like good for you if you want to have a threesome but like I'm not interested 
been reading about that. They like try and set Merritt and the other actress up at the beginning of the book. Like they make them go on dates and shit. Or they like are like actually interested in each other, but like I don't know. I just like didn't like that. It made me feel gross. But other than that, I thought it was so good. So so good. I am also so excited about this book that I just recently finished. Um, and that is The Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. <sighs> I love this book. I love this book so fucking much. Uh, it's set in the 1950s San Francisco. It follows our queer Chinese main character who is coming to terms with her sexuality. She's trying to figure out if she has a crush on one of her classmates. And she starts going to this like lesbian gay night bar to watch a male impersonator perform. And she's going with this girl who she might have a crush on. And so she's like coming to terms with everything there and like feeling more like herself than she has in her entire life at that club. But then she's also kind of like struggling with still being friends with like her Asian friends from elementary school and like her friends who live like in the Chinatown community with her who are like very like prim proper. Like one of them is joining the the main character is so sweet i literally love her i only want the best for her ever the end is not automatically satisfying like you do kind of have to work to get the happy ending that you want and it's not even like an explicit happy ending but i don't even care because it's that good it's also kind of dealing with the red scare um and the deportation of chinese immigrants which is crazy and very informative and the author includes a section in the back at the end of the book detailing and kind of explaining the research that she did on the Chinatown community and the Red Scare and lesbians in San Francisco and gay nightclubs and our main character is so interested in space travel and becoming like a um I think she wants to become like a mathematician or she wants to do something with space but like talks about you know like space race and like the first woman computer who like helped get a shuttle into space like it's just so good and I cannot cannot recommend this book more. It's everything that I read in January, February, and March. Um, hopefully I get this video up. Okay, um, that's it. So I think that this might be fun to do a quarterly thing because it doesn't put a ton of pressure on me. It might be nice for you to see what I'm reading and we want to have that long video at the end of the year. Maybe I'll do a best and worst of the year. So thanks for watching. Um, see you in three months. <laughs> Bye.